Bushcraft 412 and today let's talk about bow hunting. This is going to be my first season bow hunting. I'm new to archery and to bows and you know going through the process of picking out and buying a bow was was actually quite a bit of a hassle. There's really not a lot of good videos on YouTube that go through the basics for someone who is completely and totally new to it. It's, it's really frustrating and I just kind of wanted to put a video out there to kind of share what I've learned in this process with other guys who are also brand new just starting out so that you know they don't have to spend the time and the effort kind of researching these things. Um, first thing off when you pick a bow you know the big thing is right or left handed. I'm a lefty so it's a big deal if you're right handed you know skip forward you can skip this but when you're a lefty you gotta get a left handed bow and they're really difficult to find. Uh, most stores only get one or two and they're reluctant to order them unless you pay for them ahead of time and you know I hate to pay for something you know that you haven't even held or seen you know so it took a while of me going to places to find one that was in and that I could actually handle and look at you know before I could you know commit to purchasing it uh, this one here this is actually a Martin Exile I just picked up uh, it's a lefty 60 pound draw which I believe is the highest it goes for that model I believe they make a 70 in the rights but uh, the, one of the, the sad parts is lots of times the left-handed bows do not go as high of a draw weight as the right-handed bows. I don't know why. Maybe they just don't sell as much. No clue. But it's out there. You know, it is harder sometimes to find the heavier draws with the left hands. Uh, also, I have short little stubby arms, and I have a 26-inch draw. So once again, you got to make sure you have a bow that's going to fit your frame. You know, me being on the lefty, it's a special, you know, kind of thing. But for for most people, though, you do, you know, you can't just walk into a store and buy a bow. You know, I got to really, 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 really emphasize that. Do not just walk into a sporting goods store, buy out, and walk out with a bow. Bows need to be fitted to you. And it's 100% necessity. If they're not, you're never going to get accuracy out of them. Um, and now a lot of stores do fit bows to now places like gander mountain bass pro um even dick sporting goods they they uh fit to you um it depends they have to have someone on staff who can do that stuff and your average kid working there in the evenings can't do it can't run the bow press but a lot of them do have places that and a person who works you know certain shift who can do that kind of stuff for you so do your research ahead of time make sure where you buy the bow can fit it that they can cut your arrows that they can do everything that needs to be done ahead of time before you even think about purchasing. And once you find a place that does all that, or if you decide to go to a pro shop, um, a pro shop is your best bet. It's going to be more expensive because, you know, it is a pro shop. But they are going to be the experts who can fit it best to you. Um, I did mine, buy mine at a big name store, but it's a big name store that can fit to you. And the guy there, I do know the guy, and he does a great job, very patient. Spends a lot of time making sure it's fit to you perfect. Uh, he's also very good with guns. Um, he's a real expert. Even though he does work at a at a big box store, he, you know, nonetheless does terrific work. Um, this here is a Martin Exile. It's around a $400 bow. Nothing spectacular. Not bottom of the line. And nowhere near top of the line. But it's a good all-around bow, and I think it's a good bow to learn. Um, and archery is something you have to learn. You can't expect just to come out and be good at archery. It takes a lot of practice, a lot of work. Um, even now, having this thing out to the range a handful of times, uh, my accuracy still needs to improve, you know, a little bit before I can think about hunting with this thing. Uh, so let's go over some basic, basic stuff. Uh, when you're looking at a bow, another thing you have to look at is what does it come with? Is it coming in a package? Or is it, you know, just the bow itself? What you need to look for is what do you have for an arrow rest? Uh, this one here is a whisker biscuit, uh, which is kind of a design that's uses like a paintbrush, the hair, and it holds the arrow in place while you shoot. These are really good if you like to get up and walk around because they hold the arrow very steady. There's a million different kinds of arrow rests. This is not the only type. People have all different kinds of preferences. Um, but this is what came on this one, and I do like whisker biscuits uh, because of the fact that they hold the arrow in place, and they're not horribly expensive. Uh, this is a fiber optic sight. 
you want to make sure your what kind of sight it has. This one here is three pins. You see, there you go. Three pins. Uh, right now, I think I have it set for 20, 30, and 50 yards. Um, you do have to sight these in just like a gun. You have, you know, you're going to need Allen wrenches, and you're going to have to make adjustments. Um, and you know, just like a rifle, you may not be hitting on paper those first little bit, so it can be frustrating. Uh, this one here is actually a pretty cheap sight, and it only has three pins, and also the, you know, it's just kind of cheaper material. It's not, it's definitely not a high-end um, sight, but that's really not a big deal for a starting bow. This is more than adequate. Um, as I move along and get better and, and have better accuracy, I may upgrade this. Who knows? Same with the rest. As I get better accuracy and I get better with the bow, I may upgrade. Uh, this thing comes with this weird stabilizer string. I don't much care for it. I may take it off. Um, it has just come on and off with Allen wrenches. I have to look on Martin's website and see if they advise taking it off or not before I do. Um, we'll see on that one. Peep sight. Um, this is another preference item. Some people use kisser buttons. Some people use nothing. Uh, this is basically an aiming, helps you aim, um, and it's part of the tuning process. This needs to be tuned in with your sight in order to give you a clear, it's basically like your rear sight in a rifle. You look through this, look, and then look at your sights, and it helps line up the bow. Um, once again, if this isn't set right, if this is too low or too high, you will not be able to sight in your pin sights. So, just because you get a bow and... It's adjusted for, you know, draw weight and your draw length. Does not mean the bow is ready to go. You do have to worry about the peep sight, the sights, um, other things like that. And another thing too, when you are new, have them put the draw weight down. Don't be a tough guy and pull a bow that's above your, your draw weight. This one is a 60 pound bow, but I had them drop it down to 50 while I learned. It doesn't cost much to go back in and have them adjust it back up. But I would rather be safe and draw the bow safely and do up good form. And then I will go up and have them put it back up to 60 once I've gotten better with the bow. Like I said, don't be a tough guy. You're not impressing anyone. Go with the lightest draw weight you can until you learn. Then have them increase it. You know, pride isn't worth you know, starting out with bad form and getting frustrated and giving up. Um, let's see, what else? I mean, there's a lot of accessories you can buy. I don't have any accessories on this, really, except I did buy a stabilizer, which does make a big difference in the bow, in the noise, and the stability when you shoot. I, mean, you know, I take this on and off and shoot. It makes a big difference. That's a cheap one, maybe like $10.00. But it really does make a difference. I'm, I'm sure if I spent more money and bought a high quality one, it would make an even bigger difference. Um, accuracy wise, this bow right now at 10 yards, I'm putting them into about the size of maybe uh, a small apple. Um, you know, at 20 yards, I'm putting it in the size of a uh, grapefruit. At 30 and 40 yards, you're looking closer to a basketball. But, like I said, I'm new to this. It takes time. It takes a lot of patience and working on your form and developing good skills. So, you know, I guess I just got to put my time in at the range. Um, last thing we're going to talk about. Well, two things. One, get a good release. I had a cheap $5 release I was using. And then I upgraded to this guy. You know, it goes around your wrist. Big difference in accuracy. Spend the extra money, spend the extra 20 bucks, get a good release. It really will make a difference. Uh, this one also came with a quiver. Your arrows, when you buy your bow, they have to be cut. Um, when I was in there, a whole bunch of people came in with arrows and were like, oh, can you cut these for me? And they ended up charging them like six or seven bucks to cut the arrows. When you buy arrows from most stores, ask if they can cut them for you. Because if you cut them, most will cut them for free when you buy them. Why buy them? Then take them someplace else and then pay them to cut them. And then pay to put the inserts and, and all that. Your arrows need to be fitted to your bow. And you also need to have the right kind of arrows. There's carbon arrows, aluminum arrows, 
They have a different spine, which I guess is like the stiffness of the arrow, and it has to match up to your bow. I don't understand it all entirely, but if you don't know what you're doing, have someone pick out your arrows for you. Have you know, tell them what you have, what your draw weight is, what your draw length is, and let them pick it out. Um, a lot of the arrows have a chart on the back you can look at that will tell you what to get. Uh, aluminum and carbon, I guess, is just a preference. Um, I do like using the aluminum for target practice because they don't break as easy. The carbon, if they tend to hit anything hard, like to explode. Uh, so I do have a bit of a preference with the aluminum, but I think the carbon are uh, better accuracy, at least from what I've seen so far. They tend to be straighter and, and fly a little better. But, you know, like I said, I'm still learning, still figuring this all out. But I just wanted to share a little bit that I've learned so far just to kind of help guys out who are looking to get into this. And once again, the biggest thing is get a bow, get it somewhere where you can get it fitted to you. You have to do it, otherwise you are not going to be accurate. You're not going to be able to shoot it, you're going to be frustrated, and you're going to give up.